Would you please stand for reading of God's word? From the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 25a through 27. <clears throat> Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Colossian, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples who loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciples, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciples took her into his own house. May God add his blessings to the reading of his world. Word. Words. Amen. Good job, Luke. Well, what are we going to do? Who is going to help us in the current situation that we find ourselves in? Everyone's sources of incomes are in jeopardy. Our leader sounds like he's having respiratory problems every time he speaks. Of course, he could get it together and at any moment rise to all the naysayers around that are hounding him and mocking him. Or this could very well kill him. Who is going to help us? Where will our safety and leadership come from? Where will our hope come from? These are all questions that must have been running through the disciples' minds as they were around the cross, as they saw Jesus. Well, for those disciples who hadn't ran away and abandoned our Lord, their leader, barely able to breathe and speak, having for each breath to push up on the nails in his legs and in his wrist, and his back was beaten to a pulp. It would scrape across that wooden beam as he would try to speak. What would the disciples do? All their hope, their income, their leader was slowly pouring away moment by moment before their very eyes. The disciples had much to worry about in this moment. Many had left their family, their friends, their businesses, and work to follow Jesus. They were going all in. He was their everything. There was no going back to the normal life, at least without great shame on themselves and their families. And then there was Jesus' mother, one of the people referenced around the cross in this passage. It seems at this point that her husband Joseph had died. Who would help Jesus' mother? There wasn't social security at this time. If you were a widow, you are one of the most vulnerable people in society. Who would help Mary survive? What are we going to do who is going to help us? What is going to happen to our leader? And Jesus, with the air running out of his lungs, running out of his system, he says this to Mary and to John. Woman, here is your son. And to John, here is your mother. Jesus, in his last moments, is making sure the needs of those around him are still met. He tells them and reminds them that there is going to be a new order, a new family. Mary, here is your son to take care of you. John, here is your mother to take care of her. Jesus demonstrates this, that Followers of Jesus are members of a new family. Followers of Jesus are members of a new family. We are on a hot streak right now at Twin City Methodist Church 
Uh, we are welcoming new members every week. We've gone one week, two weeks. Is somebody going to join today? Maybe, maybe we'll be at three weeks here. And I love that when we welcome people, we ask them to make a vow. Will you be present with your, will you be faithful with your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness? But y'all notice I've been asking you too. Will you accept these people into your church family? Will you do what you can to help guide them along? And I ask you to renew your vows as well. It's a great reminder that we are not just a social club, but we are part of God's family. Followers of Jesus are members of a new family. You see, Jesus modeled this also in another moment. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 46 through 50, records this. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mothers and his brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. And someone told him, your mothers and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. And he replied to them this. He didn't say, let them cut through the crowd. He said this, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. I wonder if Jesus' mom was outside. He said, what? I'm about to go in there. Jesus went on to say, for whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Church, this is great news. Jesus isn't saying here that family isn't important. But he is modeling how God's family is something different, something more, something deeper. Now, if you grow up, if you've grown up with a perfect family, your mom and daddy never argued, you never got in trouble, maybe that doesn't mean a lot to you. But there are people who have come from broken homes, who have had parents who were abusive, or family members who have hurt them in serious ways. And when they hear that, they can be part of a godly family, a part of God's family. It means so much. When you go through times where your family and you need a little distance where it's appropriate, you can remember followers of Jesus are members of a new family. A call to this new family is also a call to a family who loves each other. God's family loves each other. And we are called to take care of the vulnerable. We are called to help those in need in our own family. This virus that has been going around, COVID-19, it affects people who are more Mary's age and not John's age. Around the cross, John the disciple maybe would have been in his 30s and married Jesus' mother would have been in her 40s or 50s, somewhere around there. She would have been the one who is much more likely to get sick and would need the help and care. So a little bit of background about my family. I come from a medical family. My dad is an internal medicine doctor. My uncle is an internal medicine doctor. His other brother is a PA and his sister is a pharmacist. And then my mom is a nurse practitioner. So when all the grandkids started going off and getting jobs, my brother went to West Point and an engineer. I'm a preacher. And the other one's a scientist and did an internship for NASA. The other one's like an archaeologist. And they all have, we all have wonderful careers, but they're really sad. Nobody went into medicine. Um, but there's reasons why we didn't go into medicine. Um, one of them was I think my dad took me on rounds in the hospital at a little too young of an age. I can remember being in second or third grade, and most of the time you go into a room with him, and it's really boring. He's just asking questions. But in the ICU this day, me and my older brother got to see somebody coding, and they're, you know, running in the car. They're about to start shocking them and bringing them back to life, and the nurses are like, "This this is too traumatic for these kids, and they ushered us out, and we had to go sit in another room. And then my dad came, and he found me, and he said, why did y'all leave? It was just getting good. He wanted us to watch this very serious, uh, life-threatening moment. So that's the type of person I've become because of my young, informative experiences growing up. Uh, So right now, my dad, he's remarried, and my stepmom, they have um, twins who are six years old, right? Y'all may have seen them. They've come and worshiped with us several times, Sandy and Flory. And my dad also watches the news and lets them watch the news, too, when Luke and Lydia spent the night 
um, with them a couple times. Luke was asking us about all these news stories that were current events. They're like, you don't need to be worried about this right now. So anyways, right now, my sisters are worried about the coronavirus. And one of them went to my dad and said, I'm scared about getting the coronavirus. I don't want to die. My dad looked at her and said, oh, honey, you're not going to die from it. You're just going to bring the germs home. They're going to kill grandmother. (laughs) So he's very blunt about it. But I say that because it's kind of cute and funny. And there's another set of dawning kids who are now scarred about medicine. Uh, But I say it because it also highlights the point. Um, It's true. Young people are more likely to make older people sick. To leave the doors open so you can come in. Um, To have the hand sanitizer, to encourage social distancing, I know it's annoying. I'm a people person. I like hugs, okay? I miss that part. But I care about you. Members of God's family care about each other. There are vulnerable people that I love in this church that I don't want to see harmed. That's why if you have the world's best immune system... We're still inviting you to practice our no handshake policy. We want you to look at everyone here as a loved member of your family. Because followers of Jesus are members of a new family. So wash your hands and wash them often. Part of being in this new family also means that our family blesses other people outside of our family. We look as Christian people as ways to bless this world. We remember from the Old Testament that the nation of Israel was designed to bless other nations. So we are waiting to see if school will be canceled. And odds are that it may be at some point. And some of y'all may get quarantined in your home. So we must ask those questions. How can we use our phone tree to call and check on people and support them? I'm an I'm a outdoor person as far as getting out in the community. Y'all better call and check on me and make sure I'm not going crazy staying in my house. But who are the other people that you could call and check on? If you feel brave enough to go out during a quarantine and get groceries, could you call somebody and say, I'm going to go get some soup. Can I get something for you? How can we be God's missional family in this world? Who needs a call? Who needs groceries? As much as I would love for you to go and spend your time in quarantine reading my blog, listening to my podcast, or watching my sermons online, all those are great options. My hunch is God may be asking you to use your time in prayer and helping other people or maybe reading your Bible. There is much that God may be calling us to do. Followers of Jesus are members of a new family, and that family blesses others. There was a New York Times article about a Kentucky man who his job was to go around and buy items um, that were in short supply. So his whole business, this is what he does full time, is if there's a certain cereal, like right now there's Fruit Loops with marshmallows in it, it is so good, it's dangerous to have in our house. But I put almond milk instead of real milk in it, Okay, so that's a little bit healthier. And so when he sees limited items like this, he goes and he will clean it out and then he'll sell it online to people who can't get it. And that's how he makes uh, close, I think it said a six-figure income. And that's his job. Well, he saw the handwriting on the wall with this virus. And so he spent hours driving all over, cleaning out every Dollar General, every Walmart with hand sanitizer. And then he took those bottles and were selling them on Amazon. Things that he bought for $1, selling them for $20 and $50. Amazon very smartly and wisely shut down his account and accused him of price gouging. And now he has 17,700 bottles of hand sanitizer that he is hoarding and said that he didn't want to sell them. He thought he still deserved a profit for his work of driving around and collecting them all. Now, before we click our tongues at him or judge this man, we need to ask ourselves, have we been that way with God's love and blessing in our lives? Have we not shared the good news that we've heard here in church? 
When we've been blessed by something financially or some type of wisdom, have we kept it to ourselves? Have we been selfish with our time? Have we hoarded the gospel? Have we felt God's love and not passed it on? When we have remembered, when we remember that we are in a new family, our priorities need to change. We need to be willing not to hoard, but to share. Followers of Jesus are members of a new family. Let's make sure that we don't hoard here that we found ways to bless others. Finally, let's remember that we can only be in God's family because of the virus called sin that has been dealt with by Jesus on the cross. We are in God's family, not by our own effort. We cannot choose to follow God except apart from his prevenient grace for us. To be a follower of Jesus means that we have decided, not based on our own merit, but God's grace. You see, the Jewish people in Jesus' time and for thousands of years before, they were very good at having cleaning rituals. They had ways to wash. They had tents you could go sleep in if you were not pure. And if you got dirty, it was sometimes a multi-day process to get clean again. They were professionals. They would be the people who would carry around hand sanitizer All the time today. If you remember the story of the Good Samaritan, one of the first people to come by is the Levite, a priest. And he walks on the other side of the road. Because if he goes and helps that man, he'll become unclean. And that would be too much work to go through the process. Here's what Jesus told the Pharisees. Clean the inside of the cup and the outside will be clean too. That's from Matthew 23, 26. I hope today you've heard wash your hands, use the hand sanitizer. Cleanliness during a virus pandemic is important. But it's not just our outside. The inside needs to be clean. And Jesus reminds us that the only way that we can be clean on the inside, the only way that we come into his family is through him. We are made clean by Jesus so we can feel his love And be his followers. And followers of Jesus are members of a new family. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being a God who loves us and cares for us. We thank you for dealing with the virus of sin through your son, Jesus Christ, and his death on the cross. We pray we can take his word seriously. And look for members of our own family, but also members of our new family and how we can support and love them. Most of all, we thank you for looking on us with your love and support. May our lives be hungry and thirst for those ways for our Christian family to help each other and to bless this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.